according to Peter Singer, the most significant thing about Hegel is his historical approach. The proposition that reality is not a matter of a given state of affairs, of static or fixed objects, but um, of a process. The process of change in the universe is perpetual, um, and that is really the starting point of Hegel's system, that unlike the empiricists, for instance, who are analysing the relationship between objects which they axiomatically assume to exist, or and unlike the uh, traditional idealists like Descartes, who are contemplating processes of the mind, uh, Hegel comes in with really a third way, if you like, which is understanding objects as processes of change. Uh, and there are two important points immediately about this. Firstly, the act of trying to understand a process in the natural world, or in history, or in the development of ideas, that act of trying to understand those things is part of the process of change itself. Now this is where a lot of the kind of mind-bending difficulty of Hegel comes in, that when you're thinking, that thought is in itself part of the process of change that you are observing. You cannot separate out the act of thinking about something from the nature of that something that you are thinking about. Just a moment to let that uh, sink in. Everything in the universe is change, and part of that change is your contemplation of the universe. It also follows that by the time you've reached some sort of conclusion about an object, we can define that widely, an object of thought. It just means reach a conclusion about whatever you're thinking about. Then that object will have changed. Uh, you cannot be certain about the object at all. The only real understanding you can have is about the way in which you or others have attempted to understand it. Sometimes here the idea of a river is used. You can uh, look at a river and believe that you're seeing the river, but the actual molecules of water in the river have moved before you've even finished forming your idea of whatever it is you're thinking about the river. Um, only the idea of the river survives, and the idea about the river will also be subject to change. Now, what is this? universal something that is undergoing perpetual change. He calls this Geist, uh, for which there is no exact translation into English. The usual translated word in English is mind, but it also means something like spirit or ghost. At, at any rate, uh, mind or Geist is not a physical substance. It is a non-material category. Um, so we know that, uh, according to Hegel, change is permanent and perpetual, uh, and that thinking about change is itself part of that change. We know that the thing that is changing is a great sort of primordial mist called Geist, or mind. Now Hegel is a Christian thinker, and so Geist is also God. And I think that the easiest way to understand this very difficult concept of Geist is uh, to look at it in Christian terms. So, in the Christian system, before time, there was a, an era of perpetual peace um, where there was no history, no change at all, and and I suppose a sort of eternal bliss. Now, this came to an end when Adam and Eve were thrown out of the Garden of Eden. The reason that happened was that they'd eaten from the tree of knowledge and they became aware that they were human uh, and that they were somehow separate from God. 
the whole saga of human history, all the conflicts, wars, change, development, uh, in the Hegelian system and the Christian system, is the attempt of mankind to get back into the Garden of Eden. Uh, and that means uh, reuniting with God totally, or, as Hegel puts it in his system, for the Geist to become fully aware of itself once again, to have no awareness of anything other than itself for an end to alienation. So both in Christianity and in the Hegelian system, you have a cyclical uh, version of history that starts and begins with the separation of man from God. When you have the separation of man from God, you have a system of conflict. The, it's the working out of this conflict through history that causes the events of history and the process of change itself. Eventually, the Geist will come to know itself again. History will come to an end uh, and perpetual peace will be restored and mankind will be back in the Garden of Eden, which is to say the kingdom of God will be established on earth. This kingdom of God is Hegel's purely rational society where nobody feels that any obligation that they have is in any way onerous. They do their duty uh, naturally uh, without feeling it as a burden. In other words, they are non-alienated. Uh, Hegel's organic society is very, very similar in that respect to Kant's kingdom of the ends, where there's no division between the individual will, individual desire, individual wants, and the wants of God, uh, and the duties and obligations to the state and to the rest of humanity. There's a complete reunion of the, the self and the other uh, mind, as, as Hegel puts it, mind or geist becomes conscious again only of itself. It follows then that history and the facts of history will be a central concern for Hegel. Uh, and he's often described as the first philosopher of history, meaning that rather than just uh, seeing history as a compilation of uh, random events, uh, that history has a logic to it which is susceptible to philosophical analysis. According to Singer, there are two very important points about Hegel's view of history. Firstly, is it's teleological. That's a word meaning that it has purpose. If a process is tele teleological, it's not occurring randomly. Uh, it has a goal in mind, a purpose. And that's right for Hegel. Hegel thinks that history has a goal, and the goal is the establishment of freedom in the sense of Geist knowing itself. Secondly, historical change uh, has features. It has a known logical process, and this is the dialectical process. Historical change expressed in politics or in the sphere of culture doesn't just happen in a random way. Uh, it always happens for Hegel according to a pattern. And the name of that pattern is the dialectic, which will be the subject of my next talk in this short series about GWF Hegel. Thank you.